Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to another Python with OpenGL and PyOpenGL tutorial. Uh, in the last video, we were bringing up our cube and showing how we can kind of navigate around our cube with the arrow keys up, down, all that fancy stuff. And my goal here with this series is just to show you a really basic example of how we could make some sort of game out of this. Since our, our previous, you know, Pi game tutorial covered, you know, object avoidance with these blocks coming at us, we could pretty much do the same thing only in 3D. And so that's what we're going to do. We'll start with just one cube, right, that we're trying to avoid. Um, but really, once we're done, the game will actually have, you know, a lot of cubes that we're trying to avoid. And if we hit one, it's game over. So we'll close out of this and uh, go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and we can stop. Um, we stop this here. Well, we'll, we'll keep that translate, actually, because we'll start uh, behind. But we don't need to rotate anymore. Um, and that'll be it for now. The other thing, too, this mouse, you know, get mouse button, we don't need that anymore. That was for the mouse wheel. So I'm going to do Alt 3. If you don't know, you can comment out a block of code with Alt 3, or you can uncomment it with Alt 4. Um, so that's that. Now, what we want to do is we want to be like avoiding this cube, right? So, and we kind of want it to be in the perspective of the player. So if I hit the left arrow, I want my character to actually move left. Okay, so that's not what's really happening in perspective, but that's what I want to happen. So what we can do is we can go ahead and close this. And basically we need to flip all of these because originally we were like uh, controlling this cube with our arrow keys, right? That was the idea is move the cube up with the up arrow and all that. But now we need to flip it because we're controlling our perspective according to the cube in OpenGL. So for example, this would be a negative or positive, sorry. That'll be negative. This will be a negative and this will be a positive. So now let me go to run that, and let's say just imagine you're in I don't I don't know a car or something, and uh, you turn to the left. Good, you're you're going to the left of the object, right, up, down, and so on. So we have that now uh, covered. And now the next thing we want to do is we want these cubes to be coming at us. So that was stationary. Now we want the cubes actually moving towards us. We already know how to make that happen. It's with GL Translate. So we'll just copy GL Translate. And just underneath is clear somewhere. We can paste that. Um, instead of negative 1, let's go ahead and make that negative 1.0. Uh, just, or maybe, yeah, we'll make it 1.0. Uh, we'll tweak this off later. Uh, this is just a really short term kind of example. And now, uh, when we go to run this, oh, my bad. We're <laughs> going out. Uh, that needs to be a positive because we're moving forward. Let's try one more time. Right. Oh, boy, that cube. Okay, so that cube comes at us. Um, obviously, that we're starting a little close. So instead of negative 10, let's go ahead and just do negative 40 for now. Okay, so now the cube is coming at us, as we can see, and it's not. It's going to pass us by. A little slow. We'll work on the speed later. But once it has passed us by, we would want like another cube to show up, right? Uh, so how would we do something like that? Well, what we need to do is we need to access, you know, the location in the uh, in the in the environment, basically. So how do we do that? Well, we can come down here. Um, we don't need to rotate it. I guess I believe rotate there just to have it there, but we don't really need it. But anyway, uh, so what we can do is we come down here, and the way that we can basically get where we are from OpenGL. Um, so we'll say x equals gl get double v, um, and then what do we want to get from? And we'll get from the gl uh, model view matrix. So if you can't read, basically what this is going to do is going to get the information from our model view matrix, and it's going to give us uh, all of our, our location basically. So for now, let's go ahead and just print out x, just so you can see what what we have here. Uh oh get get double v okay try one more time awesome so i'll close this hit cancel here and this is basically the output okay so we've got all this data here now even if you didn't know what was being returned um you know that where we started was 40 
So for because what we want to know is where is our z? So where are we on the z axis? So we know we started at the 40. So it looks like this is our z axis. Although the question is, you know, which one of these is it, right? You've got new and old here, and basically new is what's about to be shown, and it cannot be avoided. Okay, so in our case, what we're doing is we're going to calculate when we've crashed into a cube. So this is basically what's been it's like part of your like double buffer, right? This is in the background and it will show. So you will run into the cube if this was like a zero, right? Um, so anyway, that's the, that's the number that we want. Now, you don't know it right now, but then this is your X and this is your Y. So for example, well, we can actually move. So um, let me just bring this up like this and just kind of watch these bottom numbers as I bring up the game here. And so now you can see, so we're moving X here and we're moving Y here. So you can see that those are, those are updating. So uh, with that in mind, what we want to do is we want to know when our, when has the cube passed us. Okay. Since we only have one cube, this is actually really simple to do. So we know when the X is, so when X is less than zero, the cube has passed us, right? In theory, or we've passed the cube really uh, is what has happened. So uh, print X. And actually, really, um, the first vertice on that on our cube is a one. So actually, if if we are less than one, uh, we've hit the cube. So for example, what could we do? So we could say we've hit the cube, but for now we're not actually registering hits. So I'm just going to say zero has passed the cube. Actually, negative one, we've passed the cube. So um, yeah. Okay. So. Um, Anyway, enough of that. So, so X, and then now we, what we could say is we could say camera, uh, camera Z. So what is the Z of our camera equals um, X, and it was the uh, third uh, array there, and it was the uh, number two element. So let me just pull this up again so y'all can follow what I mean. Close this. Okay, so this matrix contains basically this, you know, this array, this array, this array, and this array. And then we said 0, 1, 2 is our uh, z variable. So then to do uh, y, x, y, x and y, let's just paste, paste. We'll say this is uh, x, this is y. It's still element 3, but this would be 0 and 1. Now we're not going to use x and y for now. And soon we'll use X and Y to basically say our ship or whatever we're in is, you know, has a width of say probably two just simply because we, that's the size of the block. So we'll probably be the same size as a block. Um, but that's our width here. So then we'll say like if the block is within our X and Y boundaries, right? Uh, you know, two by two, basically, if that cube is anywhere in that two by two, we have crashed. Um, but for now we're not going to actually need it, but that's how you would do it. So now all we would do is we would say we could do something like this we could say instead of while true we could say um, object underscore past equals false and then we could say while not ob object past run this and then if if uh, oops well we need to be over here If camera Z is less than uh, zero, we'll just say, I guess we'll do negative one just to be proper. <laughs> if camera Z is less than negative one, object past equals true. So let's go ahead and save and run that. See, see how that works as we pass this object. We need to stop printing out this little matrix and we need to make this object a little quicker. So we'll make it quicker in the next, next section. So object passed, good, and we can see it's game over, and it basically just stopped everything from running, uh, and we know we've got a big block in the face here. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. Um, object pass equals true, and then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll just throw a uh, pygame.quit, and then a quit here, so it, it does what it's supposed to do. Um, so now instead of 0.1, let's do 0.5 for the translate, so that's how fast the cube is moving at us um, and then what we're going to do yeah everything else works so so how would we do like multiple cubes for example so like right now this cube is coming at us we're going to dodge it and then it's exiting and the other thing too let's stop printing x that's just a waste of, waste of space 
So now how do we make many cubes happen? Well, we could do something as simple as 4x in range uh, 10 uh, perform main and then quit after that. So we could run this and boom, one, two, three, obviously. And we're just avoiding all these cubes. So now we've got just constant cubes coming our way. Fabulous. Okay, so now, um, obviously the problem with this is they all came at the exact same location. So there was really no, uh, no randomness to it. We knew exactly where that cube was coming from. But um, just as a simple idea how to make multiple blocks come at us, we've got a working example here. So now what we need to do is we want to have the blocks come at us randomly. And then we eventually want to have like a lot of blocks because since we have X, Y, and Z here, uh, we definitely, like before we just had one block and that was okay, we can make it bigger and harder to avoid. And we could do that same thing here. But I think when it comes to 3D, like we want to have like a lot of cubes just just to be cool. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, so anyways, uh, stay tuned for that. Next video, we'll probably make this a little bit more random and then we'll start working on adding a bunch of cubes and working with that because that gets challenging quick. So anyways, uh, stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, please feel free to post them below. Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.